So just as a heads up, uh, in this section we're going to be dealing with radians. So if you haven't met radians before as a measurement of angles, then you need to go and learn that first from the A-level maths course. Um, so yeah, we'll be going and using that throughout. So I'll take it as a learnt. So what we've seen so far is this concept of having a complex number, so let's say z is equal to a plus bi, and we can then represent that on an Argand diagram. Okay, so real axis, imaginary axis, let's say n and b are both positive, and we can say, right, here's our point, uh, z is equal to a plus bi. Okay, now the link with vectors and what, how you describe a vector, a vector has both um, length and direction. Okay, so it's got two bits of information. It's got a certain amount of length, so it tells you how far you need to go and pointing in which direction you need to go as well. Okay, so two bits of information. The complex number z equals a plus bi also has those two bits of information. So it has a certain length, how long that uh, complex number actually is, and also a direction in which it's pointing. Okay, And we refer to these as the modulus and argument of the complex number. Okay, So first of all, let's consider the modulus. So the modulus of a complex number is its length. So these vertical lines are referred to as the modulus. Okay, uh, The modulus function is something that you explore in A-level maths as well, Okay, if you haven't done that already. So the length of this would be saying, right, well, if I am A along on the real axis and B up on the imaginary axis, then the length of that will be the square root of a squared plus b squared, okay? The length of the vector. So that is the modulus of my complex number, its length. As for the argument, okay, now the argument, as I said, is uh, the direction in which it's pointing. Now the argument of my complex number is the angle that it makes with the real axis, okay? Now it depends on whether your complex number is above or below the real axis here. Now, if it's above, like mine is, then the argument is the angle measured from the real axis going um, anti-clockwise round, okay? So if it was pointing over here, for example, then my argument would be this angle here. So the angle from there and then round to meet the complex number. If, on the other hand, that it is below the real axis, so let's say down there, then it's still measured from the real axis, but now clockwise, OK? and the angle is taken to be negative. Now, the angles that we use are all going to be in radians, okay, to be clear. That is the convention that is used. So, for example, if you had it over here, then the argument would be this angle here, and it would be taken to be negative. Okay? So that is how we work out the argument. So the argument for our example here, okay, is going to be the inverse tan of the opposite over the adjacent in this case. So uh, b over a. Now you've got to be a little bit careful with this, okay, with remembering this just as a formula, okay, because you're going to hit some problems um, if you just think, right, it's just b over a in this case, uh, the inverse tan of b over a. You're going to hit some problems with uh, getting the correct angle in there. So do make sure that you draw a diagram to visualise. So I'm going to show you some examples of how we can work out the modulus and argument of a complex number in the next video.